Hey guys, Andrew from Sumo Apps here. In our previous tutorial, we looked at the MVC pattern, which stands for Model View Controller. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the MVVM pattern, which is a new pattern that's quite often used, mostly to avoid the massive view controller with all your code in one class, and it's a lot easier to test an MVC. So what does MVC VM stand for. It stands for model, view model, model. So this diagram here outlines the MVVM pattern. So we first of all we have the view which owns the view model which then owns the model. The model will then update the view model and the view model will update the view. So how does this all work in coding an app in Swift? Well, the view is self-explanatory. It's the actual view the user sees on the screen, which is the storyboard, UI labels, UI buttons, and text inputs, and so on. Next of all is the view model. The view model contains all the values for the objects in your view. It has no idea about the existence of the view. It simply holds the values and it will get these values from the model and it might do some manipulation on them, such as network calls, joining strings, converting numbers to strings and strings to numbers and so on. And finally, the model. The model is where your objects lie. So you might have some classes such as dog, car, aeroplane, which contains information about that particular model. So we're still a bit confused. Let's first of all look at a practical example and then we'll code that out in Swift. So let's imagine you have an app which needs to show information to a veterinarian about animals such as a dog, cat, lizard, and so on. So how would this work? First of all, we would have our dog in the model layer. The dog might contain a dog name and a number of legs it has. Next up, the view model would initialize that dog object and then it might do any other manipulation on it, such as joining the name and a number of legs together it has in a string to display to the user. This view model would have been initialized by the view to set up all this and that will finally show the information about the dog to the user. So remember, the view contains no values of what's on the screen, simply the elements. The view model contains the values of the information on the screen, and the model can, can contain various objects, such as the dog, could also be a cat and lizard. So let's go and code this out in Swift and see how it actually works in Xcode. All right guys, so now we're in Xcode. I've just went ahead and created a single view application. What you want to do is once you've created that, go to the storyboard and add a few labels on the storyboard as you can see here now. First of all, we have the name, then the pet name will contain whatever the pet name we give the dog. Finally, the legs here will show the number of legs the dog has. And then under that, we're going to have a quick description of the pet that includes the name and the legs. So that description will be, for example, the dog Fido has four legs. And we're going to implement this using the MVVM pattern. So to do that, first of all, once you've added those labels onto the screen, go to the assistant editor. And we're going to connect those up to our view controller. So the first one is the pet name, which we'll name pet name. Just an outlet. The second one will be zero, which is the number of pet legs. Um, holding the control key to drag that line here. Our pet legs. And finally, the name legs description, we'll connect that up. And we're going to name that pet desc for pet description once you've got those three labels connected up from your storyboard just close down that assistant editor view 
and we are going to create two files which will contain the model and the view model aspect. So to do that, we'll go to File, New File, create a Swift file. The first one we're just going to name Dog. Then repeat these same steps, naming the next one Dog View Model. Okay, so we're going to start off with the dog, which is the model. So to do that, we'll do import UI kit, class dog, do their name as string, their legs as an integer, and finally, we'll create an initializer with the dog name as string, and we'll set the name in this class to equal dog name and finally the legs to equal four so change that leg to legs up the top here and now we've created our dog class here which lies in the model it will contain a dog name the number of legs it has and by default every dog is going to have four legs and whatever name you pass here will be set to the dog name. So this model will interface with the dog view model. Now the view model is the thing that passes the information on the view to display to the user. So once again, I'll do import UI kit, do class dog view model, curly brackets, do private there my dog of a type dog. So this my dog is a reference to that dog model. And remember the view model only has access to the model. The actual view only connects to the view model. So you can see here on the diagram on the screen, just to give you a quick refresher. Next up, we need to initialize this class. We'll do init name as string. And then we'll do self dot my dog equals dog. We'll initialize dog name with a the name. Then we'll do there dog name as a string. And this is going to return my dog dot name. I'll do there dog legs as a type string and we'll do return in quotes slash my dog dot legs in brackets and finally we'll do there dog name and legs as a string curly brackets, I'll do a return in quotation marks, the dog backslash brackets, my dog dot name has backslash brackets, my dog dot legs brackets legs. So all this information here is going to be passed on to the view. It should be a return. All right, and to access this from the view, we just go over to our view controller. And in the view did load, we do let view model equals dog view model we are going to create a new dog with a name and the name will be Fido then we'll do pet name dot text equals view model dot dog name let's see here yep dog name and then we'll do pet legs 
dot text equals view model dot dog legs. Now you notice here the autocomplete isn't coming up. Sometimes Xcode plays up. So if you run into that issue, don't be worried. It just does that sometimes. It's pretty frustrating. If I want to do pet description dot text equals and that's going to be the dog name and legs variable from the dog view model. So view model dot dog name and legs. So let's run that app and then I'll go over the whole MVVM framework once again in this code to show you how it actually works and the benefits of it. Okay guys, so we can see here our app's loaded. The name gets set to Fido, the legs get set to four, and the description is the dog Fido has four legs. So going over the MVVM framework, the view is only in the storyboard in the view controller. All the view does is place objects on the view, sets the layout and sets the values. That's it, it doesn't do any setting of the data or any manipulation whatsoever it will bind that to the view model which is in this dog view model and the view model is basically the interface to the model so this is where the values for the view get set you could simply be getting variables like dog name and dog legs straight from the my dog class or like the dog name and legs, you could be getting those variables and be doing a bit of manipulation to it before the view sets those values. The real two benefits of this MVVM model pretty much lie in this class. The first fact is usually this code with the MVC pattern would lie in the view controller so that's why it's commonly known as massive view controller and you end up with classes with 500 to a thousand lines of codes it just gets crazy so by putting it all into a separate class it's more easily maintainable the second reason why it's much more beneficial is for testing so you might not be doing testing if you're making apps on your own but if you start making apps in a team and quite large apps, it's quite important to test your apps to make sure they're working correctly so they don't crash and the right values are getting set. So for example, in this view model, say we had a dog that had two legs. And let's just say we live in a perfect world, all dogs have four legs no matter what. What you could do, you could run a test by loading this class and by loading this class, you don't need to load any of the view controllers at all. And you would simply return a dog legs, see if they're equal to four. If they are, pass a test. If they're equal to two, three, five, anything else, then the test would fail. But this is in a perfect world where all dogs would have four legs. So that's just a quick example, because usually you would have to load up the view controller to test it properly. And that could contain a lot of code whereby you actually need to run the app and get into that view to test it properly, which is quite a hassle. And finally, the dog.swift is where the model lies. This is where things such as objects are. So you could have a cat as well, for example, a lizard, and many other types of animals would lie in this layer. And then you would have the view model, which would set up the animals then to display to the view. Remembering our example app was for a veterinarian to view information about animals. So you can download the source code for this app below and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials.